Welcome back to another episode of WVU Marketing Communications Today. Coming to you live from the campus of West Virginia University. It's a syndicated show that sits squarely at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and modern marketing practices. From the experts to our ears, let's bring in our expert guest today here, Michael Lynch. Hey, Michael. How are you doing today? How's everything going? I'm doing good here. You guys really uh, always fascinate me because I always thought marketing was sort of more art than science. And you're definitely bringing the science into the art of marketing here. And, and without losing that part of it, too, it's interesting how you keep blending the two together. How are you going to blend it today? Well, actually, we're going to switch things up a little bit today, and we're really going to get to the art part. We're going to talk about creative and agencies and how important agencies are to creating wonderful marketing programs. Okay. Well, I look forward. Who'd you bring along today? Today I brought along uh, John Augie. How are you doing, John? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you? I'm doing wonderfully. John, when I first started to talk to you, one of the things that really caught my attention is why somebody would want to get into the creative world. What really was your stimulation? What really kind of drove you to that area? Well, I, I think, Michael, it started when I was really young. I uh, Just a fascination with, uh, with TV commercials, uh, the whole jingle world, uh, and, and in particular, <laughs> I really loved the show Bewitched uh, and how, you know, Darren Stevens was always kind of, he was working for an agency and always having to come up with ideas and pitch to the client. And, of course, sometimes he got a little help from, from Samantha. But uh, but it's just that what a cool thing you know to to sell ideas to uh, you know make those pitches. I think that coupled with the fact that I was just always always drawing uh, continually, um, you know, it's just like creativity was just part of my weave. You know, it was in my heart. So and it's always been there. Um, yeah, it sounds like this is something that you've wanted to do since very young. I really admire people that have kind of have the direction of their life focused at a very early age. That's great. So exactly what kind of education did you have to kind of get yourself ready for all this? Well, I, you know, for me, what was most powerful uh, uh, was uh, being part of a Votech program uh, in Muhlenberg County in Pennsylvania. And we had an awesome instructor. I mean, he ran a very, very tight ship. We had you know, uh, workstation inspections, and uh, we had, you know, we had actually had assignments that were used outside of the classroom, uh, whether it was signage or menu designs or what have you. But it, it really, that was very, very strong for me in terms of a, of a foundation there for the craft. And then I, I voluntarily took two summer courses, which were great, um, just to add to it. And then uh, went on to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, and often say it was kind of like finishing school. <laughs> you know, it was it was then you know concentrating two solid years for the for an associate degree program. That was an awesome experience as well. Just uh, first in my family, really to break away from the hometown and go out and 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 get an education and and then apply it then as my career. You know, when I visualize a creative agency. I sort of, again, just almost like bewitched. I see people sitting in an office behind a desk, racking their brain, maybe looking through magazines or watching commercials or listening to radio spots. Uh, is that the way it's like in your agency? There's a little of that at play, but I, I think it's it's more of, a, of an intense collaboration on a daily basis and, and bouncing ideas off and, and, and doing some deep dives, some real immersion into what the client may need versus what they say they need. Uh, it's, it's a lot of analysis and it's a lot of strategic uh, work, strategic planning that goes into fulfilling a, a, a deliverable with, for a client. You know, for our office, too, it's completely an open workspace. So uh, we're constantly interacting with each other or maybe yelling down the down the hall to others, but it's, it's a model, I think, that, that serves us well. And we're we really, we call ourselves a collective works, Augie Gray Dre Collective Works, and it's really because we do have a collective of people that may specialize in video or photography or, or writing or 
web and we bring them in and they become part of the team um, as as we need those resources and as creative directors we we know who might be the best fit so we're able to kind of hand pick people that are going to be best at at uh, working with us on that particular client's work you know again kind of thinking back to the good old bewitched days I th- yeah. yeah I visualize these people just sitting around doing creative things kind of coming up with magazine ads and things like that how have things changed since then is it still just sort of you know depending on you know what is the witchcraft and what is uh, really the magic in this I, I think what it is it's it, it first starts with creative folks that understand the importance of of of, of, of coming up with a design or, or, or strategy that's going to fit the client's needs. It's not about really what what we want per se, but it's what we are working together to deliver a a, a, a product or a marketing plan, if you will, and, and and making sure that that's that's hitting everything that's needed. And then we're we're also often involved in uh, in measuring the results of that. Uh, clients were really looking for that. You know, what is it doing? How is it moving the needle? So it's it's um, it's creativity meets strategic stra- strategy, and, uh, it, it, and when those come together and and work well, it's it's absolute magic. Um, that's the wonderful bewitching moment, if you will, when that when that all happens. Have you ever had a client that just demanded that you went in another direction? than you felt comfortable with? And exactly what did you do in that situation? Well, I mean, we pretty much know instinctively, uh, having been in the field for a while, that, 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 that where they want to go may not be the best fit. So um, sometimes I think you just have to think, um, you have to find a way to kind of bring them to the center, back to center, and say, you know, look at this. It's, it's, I'm not a real big proponent of, uh, of bulldozing, like saying this is it and take it or we're out of here. So, so you know, it's really, uh, I think the art of the craft is really is creating a solid rationale so that they see where they may be better served with, with the end product um, that help them kind of educate them. I mean, there's, we all, we all like to be educated as we're, you know, whether we're buying something, we like to know where it came from. We like to know, any kind of details about who made it. Um, so I think that same thing is at play with the creative product, or creative services is let them, let them learn about the process. And oftentimes that helps. And then there are though, there are those times that you just have to say, uh, you know what, uh, it fits not right part ways. That's happened very few times in, in my career, but. But you realize there's the, the chemistry and, and shared goals and, and, and shared engagement is, is just not going to be there. So that's, you know, you pretty much have to call it what it is at that point. Yeah, I think I know as many marketing majors who ended up not going into marketing as I do other majors that ended up being in marketing. If you were going to give advice to a student today... What would you suggest? What path might do you think they should best take to fit into the marketing world? Uh, what path? I I would have to say that uh, we're really doing some heavy lifting, hard work. Uh, it, it, this is a business that is, is requires a lot of stamina. Um, whether whatever role they're playing in terms of marketing, whether on the creative or account side. They've got to realize that this is this is um, a pretty intense field, and a lot of people I think come into it thinking you know it, it has sort of an allure to it. Um, but it's um, it, one of my favorite uh, book titles by Milton Glaser is "Art is Work." Uh, you know this is work, um, and um, it, it's you know be ready for that. I think you want to kind of. Fill your uh, experiences, educational experiences, with you know writing skills, with business, and and so you have a really gain of a fuller understanding. Uh, and of course, last but not least, is is the digital, uh, the whole digital environment, social media that's become has eclipsed a lot of uh, traditional media. That's great. We're going to take a little break, and when we All come right. back, John, I'd love you to talk about some of the projects you've taken on in the past. Sure. Great. Love it. 
And just a quick note to remind you that today's program is brought to you by West Virginia University's online data marketing communication program. First graduate program of its kind in the country, focusing on strategic thinking, critical problem solving, and informed decision making. The good folks at the Data Marketing Communications Program prepare you for your career by learning the innovative tactics from award-winning faculty like those presented here today. And you can learn how to mesh the art with the science of marketing today. Learn more at dmc.wvu.edu, all of which stands for the Data Marketing Communications Program at West Virginia University. All right, back to uh, Michael and his guest. And I, I'd love to inter- interject one question if I could here. W- what does your guest think about this continuing balancing act between art and science? Left brain, right brain, uh, which is it, uh, art or science? I would have to tell you that I, it is, a, it is a, a wonderful balance of art and science in that the methodology and the availability of data today uh, has has strengthened that that union between creativity and science, and it's it, they, they are they're joined at the hip, uh, and it's a wonderful thing because, like I said, it, it can validate and or uh, quantify or qualify the the approach, um, and and it's essential um, if if you're not embracing that side of the, of the agency uh, deliverable, I mean, it's, uh, you, sh- you ought to be, uh, because it's, it's, I think it's imperative to, to blend the two. So, yeah, John, and yeah. I also would like you to touch briefly, if you could, on how the number of different marketing channels, the number of different media out there today that weren't around back in the 70s, how's that affected your work? It greatly, in terms of uh, looking at case studies, Part of the entry point to a project is is the immersion that you go through. Uh, of course, you know, you know, googling similar type businesses and marketing, other places you can go, you know, Behance and other online places to to see what's been done. But the the, the amount of of data that you can glean is right there. It, it helps you craft an approach. The toolkit that you have is 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 so much greater than it's ever been. Well, I'm going to force you to brag on yourself a little bit here. What are some of the projects you've taken on that you felt were most substantial or most interesting? Well, um, I will tell you, too, just before I get into this, that, you know, everything that I've had the privilege of working on here has been an, an amazing team effort. Um, it's involved, you know, multiple disciplines and, and great talent. So as I go through these, they're they're really shared accomplishments, but they're for me personally, I would say like the following might be kind of in my top top list. But the White House holiday tour brochure, I, I created the the actual print piece that was used as people came to the White House for the holiday tour, and that was uh, during the Clinton administration. And it was a great experience um, to pull all that together and work with the social director for Mrs. Clinton. Um, it was a great experience. Also, to be able to be at the tree lighting ceremony and you know, meet Tony Bennett and Sammy Sosa and, and uh, Jose Feliciano. I mean, it was just, it was just magical, but that worked out really well. And uh, and I and I remember the day that, that that opportunity came up. It was just like, you know, would you be interested in doing this? And I was, my knees were knocking, and I said, sure, count me in. I was kind of like Forrest Gump. I was there probably an hour before the meeting, sitting out front of the White House, and <laughs> it was. I was like, here we go. And uh, I came in with some rough ideas, and they really liked it. That was a hell of a lot of fun. And not that long ago, we had the opportunity to rebrand uh, Dulles and Reagan National Airport. That was an extensive process, a lot of testing, a lot of meetings. But uh, it's kind of great to fly into those, those airports and see the, uh, the brand uh, branding at work. Also good to kind of find out more about what happens in an airport. So it was a really great educational experience as well. And that's the cool thing about this business is you, you do you get to do such deep dives into different industries, organizations. We had a chance to work on the West Virginia 150 uh, celebration, and uh, that was providing all the graphics on that. He's also worked with the 
Mount West Monte Art. And what we're finding is that even though you might have a very strong internal marketing program, you still do need agency work, you still do need creative, and you still do need that third eye, so to speak, to try to be as creative, be as in touch with the outside world as you possibly can. I know that many organizations get caught up in their own business and very often lose touch with what's outside. Any final thoughts okay. or goodbye or how we reach you uh, as we wrap up the show here? Well, I, I think uh, the main thing is that uh, this is really all about the creative heart that you have and how to be open uh, with the experiences that you have, the clients you have to work with, and, and to have that, that satisfaction throughout that journey that, you know, you're making a difference. You know, your creative product, your creative ideas are, are, are out there. It's, it's great to be on a drive and see a billboard that you were part of or a company logo that's on the side of the building and with branding. And it's just a very fulfilling uh, fulfilling career, uh, and it has, has been great. And uh, one of my favorite quotes here is from Paula Schur, who's one of my favorite designers. She says, it took me a few seconds to draw it, but it took me 34 years to learn how to draw it in a few seconds. And it's it's great to have that cumulative experience to be able to uh, fine-tune your, your, your creative thinking and apply that then to the client's needs. It's, it's a great, great trip. And I've loved it. Well, thanks, John. I really appreciate it. Branding is a very important thing. Creative is a very important part of branding. And I know at the end of the day, uh, my data analysis would, no be, would not be anywhere near as rich if I didn't have right. great creative that went with the marketing campaigns that I create. So, again, thank you Absolutely. very much, and thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure, and thank you. Take care. You've been listening to WVU Marketing Communications. Brought to you from the campus of West Virginia University. Right here in the Funnel Radio Network for at-work listeners like you.